Booster 6 was released on December 1st, 1999, and would be the final release of the year. This set introduced more fusion support in the form of Goddess with the Third Eye to substitute out fusion materials, and Fusion Sage to search polymerization, but even then, these cards were still not worth playing, as they had no real payoff compared to the two dominant decks at the time, Good Stuff and Exodia. Booster 6 did, however, bring with it Cyberstein, a way to cheat out these powerful fusion monsters to the field by paying a whopping 5,000 life points. This completely bypassed the need to include any of the lackluster fusion support aforementioned and allowed players to summon Black Skull Dragon with a colossal 3,200 attack points in the history of the OCG. It's safe to say Yu-Gi-Oh's having a bit of a crisis at the moment if you watch the last episode. It's not going to get much better for the foreseeable future, so what countermeasures do we have in place? Well, let's talk about first the new cards that got released. Cyberstein was released, and it's interesting that you would think Cyberstein being released in Yu-Gi-Oh during this time would be monumental, like it would be game-breaking, but would you want to pay 5,000 life points to summon a 3,200 attack point Black Skull Dragon, which to be fair is pretty badass, or would you rather draw Exodia turn one? Like, pick your poison, right? I think one is clearly better than the other. So Stein allows the beatdown good stuff deck to have a way to close the game out a lot faster, right? Obviously, you know, with your monster reborns and your one normal summon per turn, you're a bit limited on how quickly you can end the game. But Stein sort of closes the gap to make it a bit more doable, right? Let's say you go like Graceful Charity, pitch a couple like high attack point monsters, monster reborn them, and then you go Stein, pay 5,000, summon Black Skull, you're already at 3,900. If you have Summon Skull plus like any of your other like big beaters, that should be enough to lethal your opponent. Great, cool. Um, if you can do that in a single turn before they draw Exodia, then you're great. But unfortunately, I don't know if you're really going to be in a position that you can do that consistently enough to take down the Forbidden One himself. And so people started to move to other options. And by other options, do I mean, boy, were we grasping at anything we could to try to combat the Exodia onslaught. And that is where Morphing Jar comes in. Now, Morphing Jar is an interesting card. On flip, both players discard their hand and draw five cards, which is a neat little card. Everyone knows Morphing Jar, especially if they're an old school player. And in theory, this should be a way to counteract Exodia, right? If they lose the pieces and go to the grave, currently there is no way for those pieces to get re-added back to the hand. And so if you're lucky enough to hit the pieces that are necessary to cut off their combo, then that's it. You should theoretically win the game. Here's the problem, though. One, Morphing Jar triggers Sangen and Witch of the Black Forest, because Sangen and Witch of the Black Forest, at this current state in Yu-Gi-Oh, trigger from any zone. As long as they're just sent to the graveyard, it doesn't matter, these two are going to go off. And because of that, a card like Needle Worm, which also released around this time, and is another card that is a way to, like, theoretically remove Exodia pieces from your opponent's deck... Problem is, if Needleworm doesn't hit Exodia pieces and hits Sangen or Witch of the Black Forest instead, you're actually accelerating the pace at which they're going to get Exodia. And yeah, most of the time the games may devolve into like two or three turns at most anyway, but why would you purposely accelerate that when Morphing Jar theoretically does the same thing, except you know they have certain pieces in their hand, and as such, you can ensure that certain pieces are going to go to the graveyard. The second issue, however, is that the Exodia pieces are not limited to one. So it's not like, oh, I sniped a piece out of their hand with Morphing Jar. They can't win the game. Far from it. They actually play multiple pieces exactly for the instance where a Morphing Jar might hit their hand. And if their hand happens to be like two pieces that they have multiple copies of and Sangan Witch or anything else that's in their hand, then you just Morphing Jar and actually like accelerated their win condition and got them even closer to winning the game in those instances. Thirdly, Exodia players took note of this and actually start playing Solemn Judgment in their deck to stop a Morphing Jar from getting flipped on them, which has then in turn made the beatdown strategy also have to play Solemn Judgment to stop their Solemn Judgment to ensure that the Morphing Jar is in fact going to resolve and rip Exodia from their hand. So in theory, if you look at this deck versus what we saw in the previous episode, there are more ways that this deck can interact and actually potentially stop Exodia from immediately winning the game. And Solemn Judgment has dual utility because you can cut off access to Graceful Charity, which most of the time is going to be a plus two thanks to Sangin and Witch. And so even though you're paying half your life points, life points are irrelevant in a format where Exodia is the best deck because that's their win condition anyway. So if you can manage to Graceful Charity or Pot of Greed your way into some copies of Solemn Judgment, maybe protect a Morphing Jar if you know their hand is full of pieces, then perhaps, perhaps you might find some gameplay going on here. But 
let's look at what the Exodia deck is looking like during this time. It basically looks exactly the same as we saw in the previous episode. They've removed some of the other garbage that they didn't need before. They're on the Solemn Judgment to protect them from the potential things like Morphing Jar or anything that could just thwart their plan altogether. And they're even as far as on three copies of Tribute to the Doomed because Tribute to the Doomed not only can discard Witcher Sangen to trigger the effect for them to get an Exodia piece and add it to hand, Tribute to the Doomed targets any monster on the field, regardless of position. So in theory, you could set your own Sangen or Witch of the Black Forest, tribute to the doomed, pitch another one, and effectively you have turned your normal summon into a graceful charity, netting you two additional Exodia pieces. So it's like you're playing six copies of graceful charity in this deck. This is just unbelievable. And I think the scariest part about this entire deck, this isn't even its final form. Like, this is like a Dragon Ball Z saga when it comes to Exodia because the deck gets better. And I can't believe I'm saying that, but by next episode or maybe even two episodes from now, you're going to see what the best Exodia deck looked like. And after what you witnessed in the previous episode, I would not be surprised if we're just going to be doing a solitaire off to see who can win games faster. Because if you're not playing Exodia during this time, you're just playing at its severe disadvantage, and it's unthinkable that this was allowed. It, it's inconceivable. I'm at, I'm at a loss for words. Like, I, I don't know what else I can really say to convince you that, like, Exodia may be just, like, 100% the best deck ever conceived, and it came out in the first five or six months of Yu-Gi-Oh!'s lifespan. How the game survived past this is beyond me. I understand that during this time, other card games are also facing equally annoying situations, but this has got to be one of the most egregiously horrific incidents in any card game ever. And here we are 25 years later. I don't really know what else to say. Maybe people just like, or maybe they're just sick in the head and just enjoy this. I mean, I'm not really in a position to say anything. Like I've devoted my life to making Yu-Gi-Oh content on the internet and why I'm subjecting myself to this is beyond me. To be fair, I'm the one playing it. So it's more like Joseph's the one subjecting himself to it. I know you guys are ready for it. I know you guys are ready to see Joseph rage for another episode. And boy, am I ready to play some Yu-Gi-Oh or not play some Yu-Gi-Oh. Joseph, best of luck, my friend. The gods are with me and so is Exodia. You better hope that you draw Morphing Jar Triple Solemn Judgment because you are fucked. Let's not make you wait any longer, ladies and gentlemen. The reign of Exodia continues. It's time to duel. I feel like I start off every episode of this series saying it, Joseph, but uh, here we are again. Uh, somehow things have gotten worse, although I think you have brought some tools with you this time to try to fight back against the uh, the menace that is Exodia. How you feeling? Things have gotten worse. Things could not possibly get worse. <laughs> I came away from that last episode thinking, you know, I understand the Tokyo Dome riots now. I get it. <laughs> I would have been right there with them, beating down the door to get <laughs> Exodia's head. Uh, but well, let's... You are if, correct. If we only knew... If we only knew, if we only knew. Oh, I guess I'm the Exodia player. All right, all right, buddy. Ugh. Our PB is seven minutes of raw footage. Let's see if we can beat it. Best of luck. Ooh, I'll <laughs> tell you this. You, you've got your work cut out for you today. Maybe you don't. All right. We'll see if that's the case when oh, I go pot God, of greed dude. into pot of greed into graceful charity. Let's see how this works out for you. Uh, cool. We're going to pitch uh, Sangan and Witch of the Black Forest. Come We're going to trigger man. those effects. We're going to add Exodia. We're going to add the left leg of the Forbidden One. And then we're just, you know, we're just going to set a monster and we're just okay. going to set a background. Um, you know what, actually? This is even funnier. I'm going to tribute to the doomed my own monster, which is Witch of the Black Forest. And we're just not even going to give you a turn. No. We're just going to add the, the the right leg. And you know what? Good game. This was fun, wasn't it? Hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's fine. That's fine. We'll get him a game two. We'll get him a game two. That's how we drew it up. <laughs> Well, I will tell you, while your deck is a lot better, I am not nearly as helpless as I seemed that previous time. We're going to begin with a graceful charity. Okay, it's only yeah. fair. I've drawn like <laughs> 500 copies of this card uh, in the last two I definitely two don't need uh, these two, which are the Black Forest and Sangan. And, oh, interesting. Uh, we are they gonna trigger. trigger their effects, and we're going to get, you guessed it, the right hand of the Magician of Faith. We, we're not playing those cards. Sure. We, we didn't make it out to the Tokyo Dome. Oh, but we will get this card that you might see on your next turn. 
You ever you ever play with whoa, Cyberstein? Whoa, 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 Joseph. Let's talk about this. You Let's ever talk about Cyberstein, this. Cyberstein, Alex. Let's go pot. Uh, and you know what? Let's go graceful. Not so fun when this is oh happening to you, God. is it? Uh, let's lose a Sangan and a Moth. Uh, we'll go Sangan Our speed effect. run, Joseph. Our speed run. Our speed run. Uh, we're going to use Sangan to get a uh, another card that I think you're really going to enjoy. You ever heard of Morphing Jar? Oh, You ever God. heard of Morphing Jar, Alex? I uh, have, unfortunately. Then let's go Graceful Charity again. One, two, three. Graceful three Graceful Charities. Sure. Uh, let's go Sangan to the grave. And you know what? Actually, I liked this Morphing Jar. I don't love it. Uh, let's go ahead and use Sangan. <laughs> it's going to grab us a copy of the third Morphing Jar. <laughs> Excellent. Perfect. No hand size. No hand size. One, two, three. And here's what I'll say, buddy. Good luck. Good luck. So excited to dome me into Tokyo over and over. Good luck. I'll draw. Yeah. Stand by main. We'll yeah. pot of greed. Oh, my God. Yep. <laughs> whoa, graceful charity. Whoa, whoa, <laughs> whoa. Funny? Don't take those cards off the top of your deck, buddy. This is game two. We saw uh -huh. judgment in this oh, motherfucker. Okay, okay, okay. Do you have a second one? Uh, I don't. Okay, we'll draw some cards. And uh, you better we'll kill pitch me two now. Two copies of which? You better which kill me now. Activate. I got this morphing jar locked and loaded. You better kill me now. Oh, you want me to kill you now, buddy? You want me to kill you now? Okay, if you insist. We'll add the left leg of the forbidden one. And you know what, buddy? You asked for it. We Dog! will summon the all-powerful. <laughs> You resolved one graceful! Oh and a pot of grief, God. to be fair. I'm and to be fair, to be fair, I had the regeki to blow up your morphing jar. Nothing so fair about this. Fuck <laughs> off. I believe in you. You wanna try for game three? Yes! figured out my deck is uh it's got all the cards that we know and love from previous episodes it's got super aggro options like uh mm -hmm. cyberstein but unfortunately because of your ass it's also <laughs> built specifically to flip morphin jar on turn two uh i don't need i don't need summon skull i think swords is not going to come up either uh pot <laughs> What if I just boarded into like a beatdown deck? You're thinking that, oh, you're going to get me with all these morphing jars. You're going to get shit, And then all down. of a sudden, the, you're going to get beat down is what's going to happen. <laughs> the Gemini elves are just doing work. Oh, graceful. Son of a bitch. Get solemned. Okay. Uh, you know what? That did something. Yes. I'm going to set two cards. Go ahead. Okay. Stand by main. Uh, Raigeki. Yep. I know that's Moth. It's Sangin, actually. Oh, we are going to add. The lovely head of Exodia. Oh, yeah. Well, why don't you just put that shit into the graveyard as I flip some <laughs> no! morphing jar? Oh, look, you I thought lose. you were a genius. I had two left legs. Oh, I no. I had two left legs. <laughs> shit. <laughs> All right. Uh, How could this have happened? No. No, maybe you can. Oh, my God. You, you were one piece off. I was. Oh, no, I was two off. Yeah, I was two <sighs> off. Uh, now, I pitched a Sangan, so I am going to resolve that as well. Uh, and then let's go uh, Harpy's Feather Duster. <laughs> sure, for the trap hole that for some reason I'm playing. We'll go Pot of Greed. Oh, my fucking yep. God. Suck me sideways. It's Cyberstein o'clock. I don't Fuck! have enough life points. I don't have enough life points. I spent 4,000 on Solemn. All right. Chill, chill. <laughs> Instead, will Monster Reborn targeting Summon Skull. Okay. All right. Uh, we will set one. We will normal mechanical chaser, and you are going to get one go at it. You are going to get exactly All right. one go at it. Not feeling too great about it, considering my win condition is in the graveyard right now. There's no monster reincarnation or anything. So I exactly, I don't know how we're winning this game. I'll be honest with you. Uh, stand by main. Well, you've got two back row. Mm -hmm. uh, could be literally anything. Literally anything. Uh, I guess I will try for graceful charity. I don't know if I really care about this shit anymore. What are you going to do? Draw into more pieces that don't work? Go. Draw three. Uh, I am going to discard. God, I have to adapt my game plan. This is going to be so <laughs> weird. I'm going to dump the left arm, and I'm going to dump, I guess, Magician of Faith? Okay, that seems insane, but I think that's actually the right play. Swords. We're actually one left leg away from Exodia Necros here. 
dark hole. Uh oh. Uh yes. Normal witch. Mm, that is okay. Eleven. Mm -hmm. Second main, I've got two. <laughs> I'm gonna beat you down with my my critter and my witch. Oh, you are welcome to try. I'm gonna set one and pass. Okay, I'll draw. Uh, that's turn one on the swords here. You know what? I'm down. I'm gonna tribute to the doom that monster. Oh my god. Oh, and you get to resolve Sangan. I really. What are you worried about, Joseph? I What's really, wrong? Really, really need this to to resolve. I'm gonna solemn judgment. I'll judgment your judgment. Oh no, <laughs> that's as that's as bad as it could be. <laughs> oh no. Uh, okay. I will trigger my Sangan and grab myself a Witch of the Black Forest. Oh, Are we gonna no, win come anyway, on. Joseph? Are we gonna win anyway? Don't have oh, look at judgment. this! We're no! gonna win the game anyway! Oh, look at that! You felt so confident, didn't you, buddy? Oh, look at that! You thought you were so cool when you got those Exodia pieces out of my hand. Get fucked, idiot! <laughs> That was agony. I should have fucking judgmented the dark hole. This <laughs> this was this was rough. This was a Wait, are we going again? <laughs> no, I'm I playing another game. <laughs> <sighs> oh. How are we feeling? How are we feeling about what we've done today? Good? Good. I feel great. I feel great. Do you think we've, I, I, I we've proved improved that. the world by way of historic <laughs> preservation that people needed to remember this? I'm stunned. I, I don't know how we walked with that last game. I will be completely <laughs> honest with you. It's it's impressive. I guess we are seeing, though, the downside of solemn judgment. Judgmenting a, a, a well-timed, graceful charity or pot of greed and like being left with a, a board full of exodia or a handful of exodia pieces, rather, can be pretty good. But at the same time... <laughs> It could also be your downfall, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Actually, unbelievable. Sad I didn't get Cyberstein um, for uh for Red Eyes Meteor Dragon off or or whatever. But uh, I mean, really pales in comparison to what you're doing. It's so funny to think, oh yeah, Cyberstein's legal in this format and just does four thousand points of damage. And it's the yep. second most broken thing you can be doing. I don't even know if that's true. It might even be like third or fourth, <laughs> yeah. all things considered. It's, I guess it sucks because like, obviously you want to like do your Stein and then have the judgments ready for afterwards uh, because there is like a conflict there. But at the same time- But Stein's you the you can defensive search. deck. Exactly. Like how the fuck are we in a world where that's the case? It's insane. And I think like if we put like your deck- maybe without the morphing jars, like against like, um, in, like in a mirror match, let's say, that might be like a bit more interesting, right? Because then like judgment comes up where you're trying to like time things like in a really well, like in a situation where it's like, oh, like if they're trying to go for a big push, then like judgment just shuts that off completely. Feather duster becomes relevant because now if you like duster before judgment, then like there's actually a good trap card to stop because there's no other way to interact with it otherwise. Um, Cyberstein has this like big kill potential out of nowhere. And maybe it sucks just as much because it's like we played virtually this format a few episodes ago, but with like things that do more damage now um, to either yourself or the opponent, if it's Judgment or Stein respectively. I, I think I've reiterated this before. Exodia gets better. This isn't even the best version of this deck and it's already doing this shit. How the fuck did this game survive? I don't understand. I, you know, frequently uh, people get the feeling that like uh, Yu-Gi-Oh is, is not really a game about overcoming uh, your opponent's strategy. But, uh, you know, the show does a really good job of this, for instance. Uh, it's about recognizing that some people have everything given to them. You know, uh, Kaiba has every card at his disposal. Uh, Yusei has to scrape cards off the bottom of a prison cell in order to put together a deck. <laughs> Uh, and they have to overcome people who have just been gifted the greatest cards in history. And for so long, I thought that that impulse that rogue deck players follow uh, was the result of like watching the anime. But now I see that it is woven into the very DNA of early Yu-Gi-Oh. All I want to do after playing six games now against this stupid fucking Exodia deck is Weevil Underwood out 
steal these cards, shred them, and throw them into the ocean. You cannot be allowed to have these. It was a lot of fun being able to be that rare hunter from the first part of Battle City with <sighs> basically playing his exact deck, if not a better version of it. This rocked. <sighs> ay, ay, ay. And you'll, you'll get to keep doing it. So guys, that's going to wrap it up for another video. I really hope you all enjoy. Let's go ahead and shout the patrons for all of their continued support. So shout to Shout1317, Tim00x3, MBT Play MBTPlayMidolce, Moto, Cameron L. Smith, Phoenix the Immortal, Pony Stark, The Synchro Guy, Dan the Man Hoban, Little Fade Leaf, Draconic, Dylan Rare Hunter, JW11860, Extremely Vulgar Man, Brody Eastwood, Flannel Daddy, Chrono the Branded Enjoyer, Twinkle Muncher, Matthew Brady, Uncle Brian of Stardust, Power Rave, both out a stupidly long name that barely makes any sense and is annoying to read out loud, Cheeks McLapperty, Stolfin Amethyst, Wonder Waffle, MBT cancel by all community soon, cancel by all committee soon, cancel by all players soon, Nicholas Carpenter, Corvain, Calvin Tempest, RIP Akira Toriyama, Daniel Howell, and life keeps using solemn judgment on my hopes and dreams. Thank you all so much for watching, and we will see you next time.